Yeah, that was that was super fun. I'll disclose the I- exact fields uh, after the next round. Make it a little, I, little challenging to hack the scoreboard. I, I ping someone that I think I know that either works or knows someone over at AHA Slides. We'll see if they come back. Gotcha. Here we go. Could you disclose your live on the air? Uh, just have them join the, the <laughs> Zoom, and we'll just disclose. Right. <laughs> Responsible we'll disclosure and catching by it. the vendor, real time. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how else you would actually patch that without, like, unless I have a beta version that's doing those requests differently. Like, you couldn't put a WAF in front of it. You couldn't do any, uh, like, mod rewrite or or. Uh, request capture and, and send back because everything is client side so you're kind of you're kind of at the mercy of the app yeah the real patches they just need to take the answer server side and calculate the score right interesting I, of other platforms of similar vulnerabilities that run the trivia and quizzes and scoreboards like Kahoot Yeah, I'm wondering if we can get it switched over before the... Uh, we've run it on another platform. So we've run the tournaments on uh, HubSpot in the past mm-hmm. and our marketing platform, but yep. it's uh, not as uh, elegant. Yeah. But maybe less vulnerable. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, HubSpot has a lot of functionality. So uh, were you going to go through the, the questions and answers, answers, Paul? I will. If, okay. if we can't get Zach or anyone else on, okay. we'll, uh, we'll walk we can, through some of yeah, those. Another minute or so. So, Paul, are you going to walk through it with, the, with a couple of the winners and then also demonstrate how you would go about doing it? Is that the idea? Yes. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Go for it. Let me get my screen shared there. We got that one. This over. Bear with me one second as I pull up some content. We just have the questions in. Stop. Questions, answers, no spoilers anymore. I have to be careful not to show the next round. <laughs> Let me see if we can zoom in. I need to get that big. I mean, that just means that they were paying attention to the, you know, to the show, so they got hits. Well, if you need to look at the response headers in the Jason, it's in the Discord channel. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, uh, We're now just picking apart AHA slides in the Discord channel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're getting a free app. This is, this app is, now, a, this is now an AHA slides vulnerability stream. Right. Mm. It's amazing. All right. Try this here. That's ah, readable. That's better. And we'll get the play. See, I also wonder where this is all client side and the audience unique ID. I, I wonder if you could actually give other people points as part of what you, as part of your response. Ooh, the generous uh, hacker there, yeah, huh? A donation, yeah. the Robin Hood <laughs> of. Uh, you have to figure out what your audience unique ID was, or if you could fuzz that. <clears throat> I wonder if it's just taking that into account, or if it's actually looking at audience name and doing a a back and forth correlation between the two, if it has one or the other. I hope not, but I gotta mirror my desktop. This is too far away here. My eyesight is not that good. I had to download the original and, and zoom in on the bigger screen. <laughs> mm. Extend. No, I want to duplicate one and two. I think. No, darn it. One and three.
All right, that's better. Sorry. Paul and Paul were both so still there. I thought my my uh, my Skype had locked up. <laughs> so those Micheladas, man, are just kind of like melting us into our seats. Those morning, those morning, uh, morning routines are getting to you, huh? Uh, good for it. Yep. Thank you, Johnny. So we're gonna walk through uh, how a competitor might have gone about getting through uh, this content. Uh, short of a competitor with a web manipulation proxy giving themselves the score that they felt like they deserve in the moment. We'll save that for a different stream. Mm -hmm. So let's say I have a bunch of file hashes here and I'm trying to figure out which one's likely the false positive. So over to the question of empty file hash. Of course, we can Google search these, um, paste them into Google and try to figure out what's unique about one. Uh, but what I did here is on the fly, I just selected all three file hashes. I held down control C. Polarity the community edition here will actually run those searches across US Sir and Alien Vault and sandbox tools and blogs and Twitter, and LinkedIn. And you'll notice, uh, and, and maybe some of the competitors who uh, were not using a web manipulation proxy might have noticed the, uh, the empty hash flag here from the MISP warning list, uh, kind of a, this is used often uh, as a area where common false positives might pop. And that was the hint there that this is just an empty hash. Uh, of course, there is the possibility that if you deal with file hashes or empty files often, you might have seen and spotted that hash right from, uh, right from the beginning because the human brain's pretty amazing and mm -hmm. has, uh, has that recognition capability. Can you explain what the, the MIPS warning uh, integration is? Just a, just high level? Yeah, so MISP warning list. So MISP, um, it's sitting out there on GitHub. Uh, they have a, a list of things like file hashes and IP addresses, I believe domains in there too, a lot of the bank domains that uh, commonly get flagged as false positives. So it's just a list of data that's commonly flagged as false positives um, because there's something unique or suspicious about it or it just looks sketchy even though it's not. Uh, and, uh, you know, what... I would say uh, not the best name thing to call it a warning list, uh, but the warning is warning. This is a false positive, not warning. This is bad guy. And uh, let's see if I can maybe show that here. So Miss Warning List is not not something that we Polarity have come up with, uh, but it is something that we integrate with and uh, in help folks leverage. So here's an example uh, of a whole bunch of lists maintained here on GitHub, the Miss Warning List, uh, things like uh, CDNs and Apple IPs and you know, file hashes, as we saw. Even Majestic Million is is thrown in there. Microsoft, a oh, whole list of things that are likely to show up in your sim, in your events, in your logs that are false positives, that are not necessarily malicious. Sweet. Sure. Yeah. Hey, yeah, can you hear me? Hey, hey Zach. Zach. How's it going? Good, good. Glad you guys saw the uh, the humor in that. I did purposely uh, not do anything, you know, suspicious. I tried to inflate the points drastically so that it would be noticeable. Congratulations awesome. on your win, man. Yeah, that was really. Awesome. Uh, I wouldn't really. <laughs> I wouldn't really call it a win, but thank you. <laughs> I think it was hilarious, and I would call it a win, personally. Agreed. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's pretty awesome. Good. What what tools were you using to kind of manipulate that real time? Burp. Yeah, so I was using Burp. You guys were right on the head. Um, you could do it a few different ways. You had uh, access to uh, set the max amount of time, so you could inflate that to inflate your points. Um, if you just answer reasonably quick and you inflate the max time to 10 days, you're going to score well. Um, as well as the minimum and maximum points are also configurable. So when I jumped up to 800, whatever, uh, I just set the max points to you know a million. 
Um, also, you guys, uh, the correct answers are leaked as well. Oh, really? Wow. So those correct answers yeah, so are in just, the request or like in the submission back? Yeah. So if you just turn on your proxy, uh, you know, set intercept on, um, grab it in the middle, you'll get the correct answer. So you can just type in ASD, grab it, uh, see the correct answer and just change it right then. And then you could set the timestamps back as well if you want. This sounds like multiple bugs. It does. And aha <laughs> slice. What the fall from grace. Wow. <laughs> Now I'm so, really yeah, curious if the person, the security professional who recommended I use this technology, knew this all along. Code. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. So, it, I mean, is it all? Well, I think the correct answer is uh, a bug in the manipulation of fields is probably the second bug. I would call that at least two bugs. I mean, if you got a disclosure of the right answers, that should never make its way back to the client at all. Correct. Right, and then you have the fact that the client gets to adjust some of these fields in, in itself. But could you also set the, the correct flag to true? Uh, no, you had to set the way the answers are. Of the, like if you have a multiple choice, it'll have one, two, three, four. And then I'll have a unique identifier for the answer. It won't actually give you the answer a lot of the times, but all you have to do is copy the unique identifier into your answer, and then it'll populate the correct answer. Gotcha. Or it really depends if it's a multiple choice or short answer. The short answer ones trip me up a little bit because it won't actually give you, uh, or it won't give you the unique identifier. It'll just give you the straight text, which I thought was the title for it. Interesting. So yeah. the straight text of the answer is in the. <laughs> so lesson learned here: if you're developing an app and you're trying to do this securely, like keep anything sensitive off the client side. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Zach, is this the first time you've taken advantage of this? vulnerability <laughs> yes it is uh i just had burp up because i was doing some testing and uh then i saw the tournament was going on so i just decided to take a little look as we all do browsing the internet right burp on <laughs> I mean, yeah Amazing. yeah you gotta know what you're interacting with it is a pain to shut off burp and turn it back on or have it right be for just specific sites yeah. yeah gotta use foxy proxy yep there you go well that's awesome did uh, did you answer any of the questions correctly on your own without <laughs> taking advantage? Uh, yeah, I did in the beginning, um, but then I got a little carried away with just having fun. Yeah, then Zach's like, "Wait, I was losing, so I had to save up my Benjamin, game." <laughs> Benjamin's pulling ahead here. <laughs> Have to deal with Benjamin somehow. <laughs> you know, I've, I've talked about how there's a relationship between hacking and cheating. And, and this is the prime example of of such relationship spot on <laughs> absolutely because yeah. we were like oh like none of us were like that's it zach's disqualified right we're kind of like no like zach should win because that was really awesome i was really expecting to get kicked to boot you right out of the comp no no because we we love <laughs> hacking i mean we may we may all have done this at one point or another in some some yes. tournament somewhere <laughs> It, you know, it, but it'd also be an interesting challenge to see if you could, uh, on the flip side, develop a web application that implements a quiz type system and does so securely. Put I, that up as kind of an example, right? I think we're going to have to do that. Yeah. <laughs> then we could sell it to all the colleges and, and help <laughs> fix their exam processes. Right. Do you think uh, colleges use the hot slides for exams? That would, yeah. Uh, yeah. Probably not. They are talking about putting the, the SATs online. Uh, and I think they set a, a date for that. If, if not now, I think all of them will be uh, online. I saw that. Th yeah. that'll, that'll end well. Right? It, that's <laughs> yeah, I, don't see any flaw. I don't see any flaws with that plan. Nope. <laughs> that not is. at all. We should all, we should all just like vote from our web browsers, too. That seems, <laughs> that seems reasonable, uh, right? I think that's, that would that's just simplify the entire process. It's called yeah. democracy. Global platform phones. All, yep. That's how it's going to go. Yeah, it, it, it actually sounds like a you know, a good programming challenge for those uh, in school learning programming to write a secure uh, kind of voting or a quiz app. That'd be pretty cool. Worthy of, uh, of a degree, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And then give it to, to us in this audience to test it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome.
Zach, are you going to be competing in the next offensive round? <laughs> yeah, how are we going to do the next round now that we all know how to cheat the system? Brenda's looking at other options right now, I think. Yeah, maybe we should try another platform and see if it gets hacked as well. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's <laughs> test another platform. <laughs> Well, that's awesome. Zach, thank you for your contributions. Thank you very much, Zach. That was way more entertaining than it would have been otherwise. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, not that the tournament wasn't entertaining, but you made it much more so, at least for me. Uh, Definitely. Thank you, guys. I had a great time. Also, gotta, Zach, how did, how did you want to handle the, the disclosure? I mean, me personally, I want to see you get credit for it uh, as the discoverer. So if there is any kind of bounty or credit, uh, it should go to you. So... If you need help with the disclosure, I, we, I, we can certainly help with that. Okay. Um, yeah, I might reach out to you uh, about that afterwards. Okay. I appreciate that. Yeah, just let us know. I think Tyler said he may already know someone there or something. So, But we'll make sure you get credit for it. If you want yeah, I got credit. a message in yeah. over there to the CEO. So we can, we can make the connection for you and uh, make sure you get the credit where you need it. Awesome. We can share credit too. Uh, you know, I wouldn't have found this without you guys. We just, uh, we, just we just let, we just <laughs> let the horse went. to water. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much, Zach. Well, thanks, guys. Take care. Take care. Take care. And for um, for Zach and any of the winners, um, feel free to reach out to Brenna on Discord um, in terms of how to claim your prizes along the way. Sweet. We'll need, uh, need a mailing address for, uh, for many of them. time we got until the next session here should i show some more uh content? we have until <clears throat> 325 all right yeah looks like i'm so sharing again like 25, back up. 25 minutes all right so we'll uh we'll show some more of these questions let's see bouncing through to uh some of them. so you have your um file had header magic bytes here um yeah, you can you can still select and run searches on those as well. And depending on which source you click on here, you'll get a sense for a uh, zip file or not. But uh, let's go to something more interesting. It's kind of hard to follow the, I found O'Day in the quiz site. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's a, a simple one uh, folks come across probably occasionally, which is you have a Unix epoch or epic time sitting in the logs, not formatted. You need to do a quick, um, you know, make it over human readable. Uh, so you just hold down control C on top of that. You get to the human time, uh, 2018, uh, 502. And, you know, you can do either process of elimination for some of these or the 2010 date and the original Karate Kid. Uh, or if you look up or knew the Cobra Kai season one release date, you'd see that it would fall on 502. Also, I mean, we talked about regex, right? Working with time in various programming languages and APIs is a huge pain in the butt. Oh, it's yeah. like either the request or the response has to be in a certain date and time format. What What is that format? <laughs> and how do I get my language that I'm programming in to represent the date in that format and convert it, it's a huge pain. I hate working with dates and programming languages. It's one of those things where you think you have it working until you hit some other hour time zone or something right, like that, and right. then boom, it's broken. And then it's like, oh, I want it in a string. Well, how do I convert? I don't have the date in a string. I have it in the date you know, format in my whatever programming language or library, and I gotta convert it. And did I convert it correctly? Yep. And, uh, you know, are there milliseconds on that, on that timestamp or not? Right. Right. <laughs> One side thinks it is, and the other side thinks there isn't, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you're in a, you're shifted. Yep. Um, oh, a little, little trivia one we didn't cover there, uh, but the uh, original Karate Kid author had also written Lethal Weapon, Fifth Element, Kiss of the Dragon, Transporter, Taken. So a uh, whole, whole bunch of content there that uh, at least I enjoyed. Uh, Kiss of the Dragon was that a Jet Li movie? Jet Li, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's the one where he had those little uh, needles, yeah, and yeah, he would yeah. like stick you and paralyze you. 
Yeah, that's a thing in kung fu movies. Oh yeah, it's, did you learn that in your practice of kung no, fu? No, unfortunately, I didn't. <laughs> they withheld that. My teacher was probably very reluctant to teach <laughs> to teach the the pressure point thing. The ac- the, the flying the acupuncture, acupuncture kung fu. <laughs> yeah, acupuncture. That's a thing in in seventies kung fu movies for sure. Do they call it acupuncture kung fu? Uh, in some of the English dubbed, I think they may have referenced it as that. In Chinese, it, it I think it, it's a different word in Chinese and different things that they would call it it isn't like an actual thing uh to have those pressure points that you either strike with your fist or you know put a knee i mean that's essentially acupuncture right yeah i i feel like getting taken down with a sword you're like okay i got taken down but yeah. like you know a little pin right it's embarrassing yeah absolutely yeah. i would not be proud to lose that way mm-hmm. but i guess i'd be happier than having an arm lopped off by a samurai sword very true all right. So the Google, uh, find the one that's not Google here. Again, select them all, hold down control C. And we just ran hundreds of searches, bringing back the ones that has results. Uh, you see gray noise, the riot rule it out there is pretty uh, clear and easy to spot. If you were filtering through false positives or looking at things that were you know, more active or beaconing, Uh, pretty quick to uh, spot that this is probably not something to be concerned about. And then what you were looking for in this challenge was the non-Google one. So yeah, we got Google, 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 and not Google, Amazon. Certainly a lot faster than running a Whois or Uh, writing a Perl script to run Whois on all of them. Yeah, the TLDR to this is that polarity makes it a lot easier to do to answer all of these questions, mm. assuming you don't have some kind of you don't have burp open. <laughs> yep, that's right. Uh, and then very similar vein, if you're triaging, you know, this list of IPs, and these ones were the uh, CDN ones or the ones that were beginning out in regular intervals. If I grab that. There we go. So now it's searching all those. And uh, in this example, I'm looking for the one that's not a CDN um, so that you'll see, you know, Cloudflare, Fastly, bunch of rule it out, but it was that first one that really popped out and looked very different compared to the other ones that it was next to. And uh, in, in case you're wondering, this one was flagged in US CERT. So definitely, uh, you know, bad, uh, bad guy flagged here as it was part of, I think the Hafnium was one of the Hafnium IPs here, the 108, although it, it looked similar. That's one of those things, trick on numbers. We called it IP deja vu. Wow. That looks familiar, but turns out, nope, just looks like a Cloudflare IP, even though it's not. All right. And grabbing some of the shell code here. All right, so there's a whole bunch of different ways you could have done this one. Uh, the first way, although it would have not gotten you the answer, although it would have been pretty clever, is you could find the shell code via Exploit Finder or a Google search. So this shell code was publicly out there on the internet. And so if you had clicked there and clicked in here, and that's probably gonna open up my other browser. Yep, let's see if I get this over. There we go. Uh, you would have found this shell code and uh, intentionally <laughs> threw it out there to make it a little more tricky. Even though the shell code says 10.10, that was not the correct answer. Hmm. So this is a shell code author who probably didn't want someone to just go in and use their code. And so they actually changed the shell code a bit. Hmm. They do that. Um, gotta got to prevent those script kitties, mm-hmm. Joseph uh, McDonald. There. And so your next step then, beyond uh, beyond trying to get the answer just from a quick Google search, would have probably been CyberChef. And so you could use Polarity in CyberChef um, here, so you can kind of get that quick quick answer. But just just going from Hex here, you can see uh, yeah, a little trickier. Don't quite have the answer there. We might want to put some filters on uh, beforehand. So a couple different recipes we could have done. And I'll make this bigger. So you can 
run it right from in polarity, but I'm going to make it bigger just so easier to see on the stream. Grab this window. Close polarity. All right, so this is just a straight from hex over. You get to this. Can't quite see the IP in here. If your eyes are really sharp, maybe you can start to move that around and figure out what the IP is. But let's uh, let's take it a little different. So first thing uh, that I had done uh, when coming up with the question, not the fastest way, but the first thing I did was I came in here and then I did a find replace. And I cleaned it up a little. So I took out the the hex and replaced that there. And then I did another find replace on anything. Oh, there's no colons or equal signs or quotes, so we don't need to do that actually. So we'll leave it at the one. I'm gonna get rid of this. Okay, bake. Invalid escape. That's because I didn't set it to a simple string. So there's my string of bytes that went into the shellcode. From that, I can do a disassemble. There's my instructions. And here's my content in the shellcode there under push. And we'll, do, we'll make it 32 because that's not going to matter here. We're not going to show the position. So here's, here's my assembly. Yeah, this is cool. I did not know CyberChef could disassemble. This is, uh, mm. that is awesome. <clears throat> so you, you, you might want to use a full-on disassembler for something if you're actually trying to reverse right. or write an exploit. But yeah, if you, all you need is a quick disassembly on some shellcode, yeah, easy to do. Yeah, a quick, uh, I mean, I, I, I often struggle with the act of obfuscating uh, shellcode. Like if my shellcode's getting caught for like Cobalt Strike or something like that. Um, so I like to go in, I, I like to disassemble it like this and change uh, and, ch and change some of the instructions into equivalent instructions. Um, and this is just, God, this is a much easier way of doing it. I'm going to do it this way next time. Nice. All right, so now I'm going to do another find replace because I want to get I want to get to this content here to decode that without the rest of the instructions all messing things up. So from there, I'm going to do another find replace, and I'm going to take out the uh, push space, and so now I got bytes all in a row, and then from there now I'm going to do the from hex. Bring that to the bottom. And we still have one kind of weirdness, right? The, the byte order here. So now we're going to just do a reverse. And I, I messed that up because it was out of order. Reverse after from hex. There we go. Uh, and now we have the IP address here. So that's the you know, slightly longer way where we throw disassembly in the middle. And depending on how obfuscated that code is, uh, you might need to do it that way to really get a sense for what you're looking mm -hmm. at. Um, the slightly quicker way would probably be to I'll clear some of this out, would be to just try to go right to the from hex. So this point. Uh, what am I doing? Find replace. You could still take out and clean up anything here. If there was quotes in here, you'd want to want to clean that out. Take all the quotes. Sometimes you end up with, uh, depending on the language, you end up with quotes on every line. And then again, you want to go string. Now we do it from hex. And then a reverse. Okay. So you can see how uh, you might be able to still get to the answer there, uh, but it's definitely not as clean at this point. Oh, I think my reverse is still here. That's good. Uh, it's definitely not as clean because we have uh, the, the bytes to do the push instructions still mixed in there in the code. Yeah, you're right. dealing with Indianness too, which is a pain. 
Yeah, so that's where the reverse is supposed, supposed to help a bit with that, um, just to help my brain a little bit. But uh, even without that, it's uh, you can see how it's still tricky to see that IP address in there. And, and you got the byte, um, you know, the the four bytes at a time here as well, kind of blocks with the endianness. Uh, and that's it on that one. Two different ways. Disassembly would have been the little bit longer way, but uh, but definitely cleaner and more universal. All right, which ones did we not cover? This one's a faster one when it comes to the the uh, the domain. So similar technique here with CyberChef, and now I'm just base64 and kind of pro tip here, um, especially if you're using CyberChef with polarity, uh, you can set it to a couple different settings. I'll show them, but one of them you can set is to automatically apply the magic function. So I just hit held down control C and it, the magic function in CyberChef, right? That operation recognized that it's base 64 and it just applied the decode base 64 right out of the gate. So I didn't have to do any extra steps or any extra bakes there. Um, so that saves me one step. Uh, and potentially gets me access to the information really quickly. And the answer to the question was sweep the leg.io. That setting, in case you're wondering here, so you, I hit the gear icon in the in the free community edition of Polarity. I go into CyberChef integration here, and I can configure it. So there's a couple different steps here. One, uh, by default, we have this box checked, only show magic results. So this means that CyberChef's not going to pop for every string you you send it. Uh, if you want it to you know, be more universal and really be always available to you, you would uncheck that, which is how I have it set right now. And then I have run magic function by default checked as well. Um, so absolutely personal preferences depending on your workflow and what you'd like to do. Uh, but that's how I have it set up for this, uh, for this example here, which is why it gave me the answer without me really having to do anything. There's some great li <clears throat> great links in the Discord. And Info by IP, IP bulk lookup. And there was another one with the magic bytes. Someone posted in there. Awesome. Let's check them out. Mm. Um, when you're dealing with uh, domains that maybe you haven't seen before, this can be useful, especially if they're you know, not necessarily ranked uh, 514, but maybe they're, they're ranked uh, you know, the 100,000th uh, most popular website. Uh, and Majestic Million can really spot that. Hey, this is a, a well-known website, even though it's not known to you. Uh, and those are the green uh, boxes right there, uh, which gets you to the rank for that one, 514, just compared to the other one, second place with Weather Underground at 684. So it's similar to like an Alexa ranking? Uh, yeah, absolutely, similar to just trying to figure out which is the most popular, and you can kind of see the scores there. Um, I think Al had uh, had a methodology that they were using. I actually hadn't checked the methodology there. Um, funny enough, the, the one that was meant to be tricky there was weatherchannel.com is actually not that popular compared to the rest. Mm. Um, so if someone looked at weather.com versus weather channel and just tried to guess at it, they could get that one wrong. And then colder than Hoth, um, not even on the list. Um, I don't know if you've been to that site or that no. planet, but it's pretty I, damn I've cold. definitely not been to the planet. No, me neither. It's on my list. Well, like, here in like New Alaska. England, though, it was, it was like Hoth and we had the big <laughs> snowstorm. <laughs> I think in the Midwest, they got one coming in this week, too. Yeah. Right now. All right, I think that gets us through a lot of the, the content we wanted to share here. I'll tell my kids when they're, when they're going out, I'm like, they're trying to go out like without a jacket or without like boots on and stuff. And I'm like, your tauntaun's going to freeze before you get to the first marker. And they know instinctively the next line is, I'll see you in hell. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't say anything about cutting into the tauntaun to survive or anything like that. Uh, it comes up every now and again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I hear they don't smell pretty. No, on, on the inside or the outside. That's right. Sweet. What are we doing next? I think we're into what the- was, um, What was everyone's favorite, uh, favorite kung fu movie? Did we talk about what the results were from I, that? I didn't see the results there. I didn't. 
Oops. Uh, uh, the correct answer for that one is Kill Bill. I agree, Al. Uh, from that list, Be I would... Because yeah. it is? Huge Kill Bill fan. Is that because of the females, or is that because of the kung fu? David oh. Carradine. It's just, it's just everything. The presentation, the action, the the martial arts that's in it, like the, the unabashed Tarantino... Uh, I normally don't like Quentin Tarantino, and I find him pretentious, but... Uh, but I really like, I just really like how over the top and crazy Kill Bill is. I, I'm a big Kill Bill, I'm Kill Bill fan, where I'm not really a fan of other Tarantino movies. The, uh, hey, Paul, there, the there was a question a... in in, uh, in Discord around, or Twitch maybe, uh, around the export feature. If you are doing the analysis and polarity, and as you're doing, uh, getting a bunch of this information back, is there an easy way to export that data or save that data out into a file format? Uh, so yeah, from a polarity perspective, there's uh, the ability to export in any individual entry, so any what we call a card there, uh, and then there's the ability to export uh, the entire overlay window uh, as well. So uh, two different ways you can export it. It's exported, I believe, in JSON format. So if you needed to leverage uh, it programmatically, you can. Mm -hmm. And that's for the community edition. For the enterprise edition, you have the ability to export channels. Um, grab notes, annotations, uh, and tie those to evidence. That's right. Yeah, and the um, enterprise edition, it, the backend data is going to be either in its existing place today for an enterprise, and it's going to be already you know in your Splunk in your Elastic, or if it's something from Polarity, then you'd be able to pull it out of the database, the Polarity database. Uh, anyone know who did the musical score for Kill Bill? No. No. Do you? Uh, RZA from Wu Tang. Wow. It's responsible really? for the musical really? score. Really? Yep. Hmm. He did a good job. All right. Famous martial artist that was the leader of the Crazy 88s that also appears in Volume 2. Anyone know who that is? He's been in and like. You're just full of trivia today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> martial, martial arts movies, kung fu movies. I have quite a few on DVD, like 500. <laughs> That famous martial sure, arts was sure in a ton, <laughs> ton of martial arts movies in the 70s. Not Carradine. No. It would be Gordon Liu, who also plays Pai Mei in Volume 2. Mm. He's been in some yeah, of the yeah. best martial arts movies. Yes. He's scary. Go look him up. Yeah, he's awesome. He's actually the lineage holder for a style of kung fu. I'm just full of useless knowledge about <laughs> kung fu movies. <laughs> I would not want to fight him. No, no. He's pretty awesome. All righty. What are we doing next? I'll check on uh, our end to see if we're getting a new format for the tournament. Otherwise, we... Oh, so we get a break. So I uh, can break. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just like so, we've been doing. So Brenna's seeing <laughs> yeah. if she can get the uh, the uh, tournament ported over to Kahoot right now, so we can uh, pen test, test a point. different one. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we can not, find some zero days over there too. She's yes. not sure uh, how we scoring will work. We have to keep it fair work. on all the platforms. That's the only way. Tyler, to do you got to you got to email the Kahoot CEO now and give him give him or her a heads up. <laughs> <laughs> 